And just like that, we are one week away from the end of the football season. I'm Brad Thomas here with GoldBoys.com, and I'm here to give you my Super Bowl breakdown presented by Sleeper Picks. Remember, use promo code GoldBoys or Brad Thomas for up to $100 deposit match for your first deposit. Man, Super Bowl. Everyone in the world likes the Super Bowl, right? At least most people do. Actually, funny story. I was sitting on a show with two Europeans, and they asked for Super Bowl predictions. One guy actually said, I don't even care for the sport. Me? I gave my predictions, and I want to give them to you. Right now, the 49ers are the favorite on the money line. They're a two-point favorite on the spread, and the total set at 47 and a half. I'm not going to run through historicals and all this data in terms of what I should do in terms of the over or the under, because we've seen over, we've seen totals that have been high, we've seen totals that have been low. That's why most books are going to offer you a fair line on both over and under at maybe minus 105, maybe minus 110, both sides, um, because you know they just want to be as balanced as they possibly can on either side. In terms of the spread, it's kind of interesting where I naturally would be on the Kansas City Chiefs. You have Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, and by me saying Mr. Irrelevant, that is no dig on him. Playing in his first career Super Bowl, he's looked shaky throughout the playoffs. He did play pretty well last game against a really stingy Chiefs secondary. Now you have Patrick Mahomes, who's been, what, this is the third time in a Super Bowl where he's been an underdog. He's won two of those. So how can you count Patrick Mahomes out at any time? Yes, the 49ers have the ability to get to the quarterback, but their defense has been quite porous recently. So naturally, I lean the Chiefs. But that's not the bets that I want to talk about. First bet I want to talk about, you know, we have to get it out. Brad, are you betting heads or tails? What do you guys think? I'm betting tails because tails never fails. Next bet I want to talk about over or under on the national anthem. I think it was set at 1 minute 58 seconds. Over. It was 1 minute 18 seconds. I believe I went over. But more importantly, the props are fun. Taylor Swift's going to be at the game. Cool. You know, all the commercials. I don't dive as much in the Super Bowl novelty props as I used to. I thought they were fun. I thought they were fun, but, you know, you can get a little carry away because now they're probably going to tell you what color outfit is Taylor Swift going to wear. From my uh, own research, I believe she's going to wear a red top, something Travis Kelsey related, because if you see the progressions of her outfit, she started out at base black, then it went base black with red accent, then it went base red with black accent, then it went red chiefs, red even more chiefs, through the progression of the season. So if that's a bet you want to take, take it. I'm here looking at the props. And you know what the saying says? The tight end is always open. Anyways, I'm taking both tight ends, but in different capacities. So there was a really smart handicapper on social media that I that I trust, and I believe things they said. And they said something that was pretty valuable. When it comes to the Super Bowl, I mean, almost even when it comes to the playoffs, but the Super Bowl even more so, you can't go back and look at the season historicals and use them as the gospel. Travis Kelsey averaged 36 yards, and I'm making this up. Travis Kelsey averaged 36 yards throughout the season, four catches. I'm going to bet him under. Or Patrick Mahomes averaged 281 yards throughout the season. I'm going to bet him under or over his 250-yard prop, right? Why is that? It's because the Super Bowl is the most important game of the season. Nerves, jitters, game plan even changes. You have two teams playing at their highest level, the best teams in the NFL. Why I think the tight end is always open, I use this principle pretty much in every big game. When there's a lot at stake and possessions become even more valuable, throwing to the outside of the numbers is something that decreases Throwing deep, yes, they're going to take their shots, but they want plays in front of them that they can control. Deflections, tips, interceptions, any of that can happen when you throw outside the numbers and throw deep. Also, both of these uh, tight ends are going to be scripted and game planned for. So let's start with the first one, George Kittle. I took him all the way up to 50 plus. Uh, you can take him 46 and a half, whatever. This is one that I thought was pretty funny, and this is no knock on anyone on social media, but I saw a lot of people saying, Take George Kittle over 46 and a half receiving yards because he averages 50 per game and the Chiefs allow 48.5 per game. But it's further than that. It's deeper than that. George Kittle's going to be scripted into this game plan because 
the great mind that Kyle Shanahan is knows that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to what? Stop Debo Samuel or eliminate him from out of the game. But even more importantly, we saw it against the Baltimore Ravens. The Kansas City Chiefs secondary is much better than the linebacker core. And I'm not taking anything away from the linebacker core, but it is hard to pass on the Chiefs. It's hard to pass outside the numbers, especially, which means it leaves the lane open for George Kittle to get his receptions. And Brock Purdy, I don't care if you call him Mr. Checkdown or not, he does find comfort and solace in throwing those seam routes, not a check down, seam routes to his tight end. And there's not many better running seams than George Kittle. On the other side of the ball, Travis Kelsey. Man, I'm glad for Travis Kelsey. Not because he's dating Taylor Swift. I'm glad for him because, you know, he's Lankin. And if you know anything about Alabama, that means let a naysayer know. All season, they were blaming the Taylor Swift effect on him messing up or him losing focus, or the distraction. We heard it. The Kansas City Chiefs aren't going to make it to the Super Bowl because Taylor Swift is a distraction. Yet, here they are, playing at the highest level they played all season, and guess who is leading the charge? Travis Kelsey. First and foremost, I like Travis Kelsey to catch a pass on the first drive of the game for the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't have odds for that now, and the reason I don't is because guarantee you by game time, you will find a book that's going to boost it. Why? Because he's the most polarizing player on either side of the ball. Secondly, secondly, funny, right? I like Travis Kelsey over six and a half receptions. Lines juiced to crap now. Shop your lines. I think I played minus 135, minus 150, whatever. Travis Kelsey in the playoffs has become a different animal. Even in this playoffs, he stepped up in every single game, having upwards of six, eight, nine receptions per game. Last game, he had seven receptions in the first half. He is the valve. You think, it's funny I say this, you think Patrick Mahomes with the game on the line is going to be throwing balls to Kadarius Toney um, Marquez Valley Scantling. Noah Gray, no offense to him. Justin Watson, no offense to them. Travis Kelsey is the man of that team. I do believe there's a serious thought that Travis Kelsey could retire, but don't you want him to retire with a ring? I think so. Those are my bets, right? I didn't go too deep into the weeds. Um, I want you to make sure, you know, when you're watching this video, you smash the like button, drop your Super Bowl prediction in the comments, but most importantly, Ring the bell, because what I've been doing is I've been making a video, this long form video that all of you guys have been watching, enjoying, and talking about, but then straight, Mr. Straight, as I like to call him, has been producing these shorts. Last week, we had a plus 425. It wasn't in this video. It was in the short, and you know how you only knew it was posted if you weren't in goldboys.com or following me on Twitter at Mr. Brad Thomas was you saw it on the YouTube channel because you had your notifications on and let you know and you catch plus 425. So just like last week, I'm going to do the same thing. going to have another correlated same game parlay. I might even do an inverse correlation to see if we can boost the odds. So maybe I'll do two just for you guys. But you have to like. You have to comment. And you have to subscribe. Those are three most important things that I want you guys to do for me. And the fourth most important thing, remember, if you have a gambling problem, pick up your phone, dial 1-800-GAMBLER. And last but not least, have fun. It's the last game of the season. Don't overbet because, listen, if there were 20 games on the slate, numbers impossible because the NFL, but anyways, if there were 20 plus games on the slate, you would not have five bets in each of them. So why do you need five bets in this? I'm sticking to my two, and I'm going to have as much fun as humanly possible. So guys, it's been a great NFL season. We've made good money, and we've had tons of fun. So let's go out with a bang. Thank you guys for checking this out. And again, one more time, as you leave, like, rate, and subscribe. I'm Brad Thomas with goldboys.com. Take care.